Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. This is Kashif Kamran, your tutor. A very warm welcome to the Advanced Audit and Assurance Practice to Pass webinar for September 2021 exams. Today is the day three of this webinar. Now, just before I start on with the proceeding, uh, do tell me, is my voice getting clear to all of you? Okay, that's great. So if my voice is getting through to all of you with clarity, uh, let's resume uh, with the day three of this practice to pass webinar. Now the agenda for day three, the 5th of August uh, is completion and reporting stage. But just before we start the completion and reporting stage, uh, we have some uncompleted agenda from the day two yesterday where we were discussing the quality control issues. So I'll start first with the incomplete agenda from yesterday, the day two, and then I'll pick up the day three agenda. So that's what I am focusing on on day three, the continuation of the day two agenda plus the day three agenda. Now, just a quick recap yesterday on day two, uh, towards the end of the day two, we started discussing the ethical, professional and quality control issues. I recommended you some articles to read and we particularly started with a drill of the March, June 21 question number two. And that's what I will be continuing today initially in my session. Now, just before that, in the session yesterday, I read the examiner report with you from the recent exam, the June 21, and we found some very constructive criticism of the examiner when it comes to writing the quality control issue in the exam paper. And I was very clear about uh, drilling with you the requirement of September, December 20 question number two and March, June 21 question number two. We, we read the requirements. Uh, I give you the way to read the requirement. What exactly is is in the requirement? What is the requirement asking you? So we were very clear on reading the requirement, understanding the requirement and what exactly you need to do when you look at a requirement like such which we were looking for in the session yesterday. Now, if I just take on my word file, uh, which I use for every day and just for a minute, if I go to the preceding word file, which I was using yesterday on the day two, just to ensure a quick recap of things before we start uh, getting to the day three agenda yesterday uh, in my day two, uh, we went across the examiner criticism and that was very, very important. Uh, you got notes of that and this uh, file has already been shared with all of you. So I hope you've read this criticism and revised this criticism because that's very, very important. We also went across uh, the nature of the question, which comes on ethical, professional and quality control issue. And I did discuss with you the marking scheme as to what a student should be doing when it comes to ethical, professional and a quality control question. Now let's start on with the agenda for the day three where we left the day two and the objective today for day three is to continue first with the March June 21 question number two plus then we'll start with the completion and reporting stage later. So that's what we are looking for today. Now let's first continue with the March June 21 question. Let's understand something more from the March June 21 question using the practice platform and let's see how we go about doing the question. Now if I can just open the practice platform for you. Uh, I hope you can see in front of your screen the practice platform. We did uh, started to write the answer on the word processor yesterday in the day two and I put the heading question number two. We copied the requirement of the question number two on the word processor and then we started to read the first subsidiary of the group, which was the Cameron company. And we had eight marks for Cameron company when we were reading the exhibit for Cameron company. We did find 
multiple issues. The first issue we found was that Cameroon company also outsourced its internal audit function to Kerry. So Kerry was the auditor and they have also outsourced the internal audit function to Kerry. Second problem we got from the case was uh, the Kerry associate was relying on the internal controls knowing the fact that the internal controls have been tested by the same audit firm. Then we got to know that one of the partner of James company, which is a group auditor, uh, has recently left James company and has joined uh, Kerry Associate. Uh, so there was a uh, there was a significant familiarity threat there. Then we got to know that uh, there is there is nothing else on the file in relation to firm. You you have not done the you have not done the independence, experience, and competence checking of Kerry Associate, knowing that your partner is working there. So you avoided the way you should have checked the component auditor. Then the last point we got that was the group partner. The group partner was saying that the international financial reporting standards and the local standards are very much the same. So there is no need to perform any additional work in relation to consolidation. Now you need to agree with me. I need I need a quick answer from your side. I did mention to you when a question comes on quality control and professional issues and even ethical issues. Even if the question is not asking for actions, will you still be writing actions as part of the issues you are raising in the question, right? So is it compulsory to write an action for every issue? No, right? You can have more issues and you can have less actions, but don't forcefully write action for every issue you are raising, right? Now, we got these issues yesterday for Cameroon company. I'm just taking them on my word file and these are the issues we identified from the Cameroon company yesterday. So let me copy paste these issues on my word file here so we can do a very proper analysis of these issues. Now if you look at these issues and we go one by one, the first issue we got in the case of Cameroon company was that they outsource their internal audit function to the same audit firm Kerry Associates. So let's let's first start with the heading internal audit function and let's see what is the issue with uh, internal audit function. So we'll first give a heading. You need to solve it on the uh, practice platform. I'm solving it on the word file here just to ensure that you get the this as as an end document of the webinar. So I put the heading Cameroon company under the Cameroon company. The first problem is internal audit and under the internal audit we start to write. So Cameroon outsource its internal audit function to carry associates. That's that's the first problem. Now the first thing is that you need to explain what is the problem here or why it is a problem. Uh, why internal audit function to carry associate is an issue. So you speak of the issue and you, you write an issue that. If uh, carry associate. If carry associate offer both external as well as internal audit services to Cameroon. It give rise to self review threat. Will the examiner give me any marks if I say will give rise to a self review threat examiner was not happy right that we just pick up the threat examiner likes us to explain why it is a threat right so just just make me clear that my voice is getting through to all of you with clarity okay that's great thank you if carry associates offer both external as well as internal audit service to cameroon it gives rise to self review threat because in subsequent audits in subsequent audits, the audit team will be reluctant, will be reluctant to review the internal controls, to review the internal controls, or will be over relying, or will be over, rel will be over relying on internal controls knowing they have been reviewed by the same firm. So will you become reluctant when you come to the audit in the subsequent years 
uh, you will not be performing a, any a check and balance on internal controls or you will be over relying on the internal controls knowing they have been reviewed by the same firm so will will that be a, is that an explanation of a self review thread here so every time when you write in the exam paper self review thread you will not get any marks if you just pick up the thread till the time you write because because the because is the explanation of the thread see my explanation of the thread so every time when you write an issue you need to explain why it is an issue so it is a self review thread that is an issue but why it is a self review thread i justified that by writing a because so now that gives me a complete one mark here out of the eight marks then the second problem in in the same prop in the same situation internal audit department internal audit uh, we were performing this post issuance right right this was post issuance when the report has been issued the question was not telling us whether they have used different teams for internal audit or they have used different teams for inter external audit the question was silent on that so we can tell examiner it is not clear it is not clear because the question is silent so you're telling examiner it is not clear from the case paper whether cameroon sorry whether kerry has used different teams for internal and external audit engagement the report has already been issued right uh, and the question is not telling us anything about whether different teams have been used as a safeguard of a self review thread or not so you are saying it is not clear from the case paper whether kerry has used different teams for internal and external audit to mitigate the self review thread so see when the question is silent how you write an answer to mitigate the self review thread rather than you take an hypothetical assumption i cannot take an hypothetical assumption because the question is silent so i simply telling examiner it is not clear from the case paper whether kerry has used the teams or not to mitigate the self review thread so i cannot do any comment on this so this is a sort of an action i'm telling to the examiner but i'm not recommending they should use a different team i'm saying it's not clear whether they have used it or not so i'm giving a hint to the examiner that an ideal safeguard for a self review thread is to be having different teams but whether they have used it or whether they have not used it uh, i'm not commenting on it full stop and you come to the next paragraph now the other issue is in the order is we can rely on internal controls as they were tested by our firm in may 20x4 so see they are relying on the internal controls because they know that the internal controls were tested by the same firm carry associate in may 20x4 so let's put the next heading internal controls and let's write under internal controls now you need to understand one thing very carefully this is a judgment right we can rely on internal control now this is the judgment of the uh, this is the judgment of carry associate the component auditor and the component auditor saying we can rely on internal control as they have been tested by our own firm in may 20x4 now i want to give you a relevance here as they were tested by our firm in may 20x4 you go back to the case study and you open the exhibit just one minute see what is the financial year end for which we are performing the audit can you all look at this financial year end on the screen i'm highlighting it in yellow the financial year end for which we are performing the audit is 31st of january 20x5 can you all see that can you all see that in yellow please confirm that okay so what is the financial year end for which we are performing the audit 31st of january right and and when when was the internal controls reviewed by the internal audit department of kerry company when was the internal uh, controls reviewed by the internal audit department of kerry company in may 20x4 so that's how much time before the year end how much time before the year end have they been reviewed june july august september october 
November, December, January. That's like eight months before the year end. They have been reviewed by the same audit firm. What if there have been some changes from May to January? What if there has been some adjustments in the internal control from May to January? Have they reviewed them? What if some designs of the internal control system have changed in the nine months or eight months up to the year end? So do, are you understanding my point everyone? So when was the uh, when was the internal controls reviewed? They were reviewed in May 20x4. What is the year end for which we are performing the audit? January 20x5. So what about the gap? What about the gap? Something can change, right? Something can change in the gap. So have we took the right decision of just relying upon the internal controls which were tested in May 20x4? We didn't bothered about testing them from a from from June 20x4 to January 20x5. Is everyone clear on this point? Is everyone getting uh, the dates May 20x4 and January 20x5? Right, so 20x5 is ahead, right? Uh, Hamza Khan, 20x5 comes after 20x4. So May 20x4 and January 20x5. They've, they've checked controls up to May, but they've not checked controls in June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January. So they've, they've not tested controls for a very substantial period of time. So that's, that's, that's the problem, right? So let's, let's go back to the word file where I was drafting the point. So in the internal control, they say we can rely on internal controls as they were tested in May. So we have to criticize this. The internal controls were tested uh, by Kerry Associates in the month of May 20x4. In the month of May, in uh, up to the month of May, sorry was tested by Kerry Associate up to the month of May 20x4, whereas the year end, whereas the year end is January 20x5 for which, for which the audit is being performed, for which the audit has been performed, sorry, has been performed because the report has already been issued. This means no control testing, no control testing has been performed for last eight months prior to the financial year closing. This means that no control testing has been performed for the last eight months because the report has already been issued. This means that no control testing has been performed for the last eight months prior to the financial year closing by the audit firm and any changes, any changes in the internal controls in last eight months. Is my voice getting to all of you? And any changes in the internal controls in the last eight months has gone unchecked and undocumented unchecked and undocumented so that's the issue that's the issue right so we we tested controls up to may 20x4 not after that so in the last eight months no control testing has been performed so anything anything changed in the internal control any design changed in the internal control any weaknesses identified in the internal controls in the last eight months have gone unchecked and undocumented that's one problem the second problem is you you are telling the action uh, internal controls should be uh, internal controls should be regularly reviewed should be regularly reviewed by the audit firm should be regularly reviewed by the audit firms as part of internal control testing each year at, at least each year to ensure there are no changes in the design and operations in the design and operations of the system. So you cannot skip to perform internal controls each year. 
Internal control should be regularly reviewed by the audit firm as part of internal control testing each year to ensure there are no changes in the design and operation of the system. And if there are changes, then you should perform the test of control on the changes. So can you skip the review of the internal control system any year in the audit? No. Right, so internal control should be regularly reviewed by the audit firm as part of testings each year to ensure there are no changes. So have, have the audit firm done this? They have not. So you are, you are giving a suggestion that this is what they should have done. Right, full stop. So that's that's one sort of an action you're writing to this issue of internal controls. So you need to understand that uh, evaluating internal controls is a regular exercise. And when you come for audit each year, you should review the internal controls. Now the problem over here is that the same firm is offering internal audit. The same firm is offering external audit. So you are placing over reliance on the work of your same firm. And that is causing the problem. So you are not exercising the professional skepticism as an external auditor, which you should have exercised. I hope you're all clear with that. Okay, let's look at the last last problem because I need to read another case with you. Uh, there, there was another problem that one of James audit partner, one of James audit partner has left and joined Kerry Associate. I hope you all uh, uh, you all recall that from the session yesterday because there was a break between day two and day three now, but I hope you recall. One of James company audit partner, which is a group auditor, has left the firm to become an audit partner at Kerry and he is involved and he is involved with the audit of the Cameroon company. Now we know that gives rise to a self review threat. So let's write uh, engagement partner engagement partner as a point and under the point of engagement partner we explain to the examiner the uh, engagement partner left James and joined Kerry and joined Kerry and has been involved with the audit of Cameroon has joined Kerry give rise to a familiarity threat give rise to a familiarity threat because the group auditor because the group auditor group audit team when performing review of the component auditor review of the component auditor or communicating or communicating with component auditor they will be familiar with the engagement partner. They will be familiar with the component engagement partner, component engagement partner, which will result in losing professional skepticism, which will result in losing professional skepticism uh, and due care. Is everyone hearing me? So the engagement partner left James and joined Kerry, right? This gave rise to a familiarity threat because the group audit team, when performing review of the component audit auditor or communicating with the group or component auditor, they will be familiar with the component engagement partner. So when when you are lising, when you are lising as a group auditor with a component auditor, do you know the partner of the component auditor? Do you have a familiarity association with the partner of the component auditor? Well, will that result in losing professional skepticism and due care into how you review the work of a component auditor or how you lies, how you lies with a component auditor, right? Yes, uh, exactly, Rima. It can also give rise to an intimidation threat. But currently, because the group auditor is different, and the component auditor is different. So the intimidation threat would be uh, mitigated substantially. But currently the familiarity threat is of a major concern here. We, we normally know that whenever there is a familiarity threat, intimidation threat is something by default, but I, I'm not going down explaining the intimidation threat in the context of the webinar. So that's one issue, right? With the engagement partner. Now the second problem is that the partner left, there was a familiarity threat, then what happened exactly? What happened was the next point. 
have we performed a proper review of carry associate have we performed a proper review of the independence competence and experience of carry associate because the next point says here is nothing else on the file in relation to that i hope you remember the session yesterday when we was reading the case of cameroon we have not performed a proper check and balance on carry so the next point and under the engagement partner due to the familiarity due to the familiarity with due to the familiarity threat as discussed above the group auditor james company fail failed to perform a proper check of carry a proper check of carry independence a proper check of carry independence experience and competence right due to familiarity threat as discussed above the group auditor james company failed to perform a proper check of carry independence experience and competence rather undertook rather undertook this exercise very casually very casually and the way the check has been performed and the way the check has been performed is inadequate is in adequate that's one issue so the way you've performed the check on carry was very bad was very casual was very inadequate you wrote you wrote an action for that so are you understanding how i'm going down putting my points do you look at my one mark answer every time i'm writing a paragraph i'm trying to justify why it is an issue my none of my answer is without why i hope you're all getting that perspective so i wrote a point internal audit i wrote a point internal control i wrote a point internal controls again engagement partner but anywhere in my answers so far so forth have i wrote the partner left and joined carry this results in a bad quality audit or they have not undertook the check on independence experience and competence this is a bad quality audit no internal controls have been performed for the last 8 months this is a bad quality audit have have i wrote the word quality anywhere in my answer or was i just focus on picking up the issue and explaining why it is an issue uh, rohit i did made that clear on day 2 that even if the question is not asking for actions you should give action if the question is on ethical professional and quality control issues right so have i just went with issues and explaining why it is an issue anywhere in my answer do you see the word quality do you see the quality has been compromised do you see the bad quality any anything like such so was i just focus on issue and the explanation of why it is an issue or was i more concerned with writing again and again that the quality is bad the quality has been compromised something like that so examiner was criticizing us yesterday that students when they write answer they write a typical statement audit quality is poor or audit quality is bad and examiner was not happy with that right so you complete this first issue cameroon as your assignment i just given you a guidance on how you go about is raising issues in cameroon we identified the issues yesterday and i i drafted some of the issues for you just to give you a relevance how you draft a one point answer now after cameroon once you complete cameroon you go back to your uh, exam paper on your screen in front and after cameroon you have the next situation which is marsh den company which is another subsidiary okay can you all see the marsh den company in front of your page the next subsidiary if you can identify the issues for this subsidiary as well quickly and wrap up the answer no hamza we have not drafted enough for 8 marks uh, this is a webinar right i cannot just draft everything for you see how many marks have i drafted for you i have drafted two marks under internal audit i have drafted one mark under internal control that's three another one mark under internal control four under the engagement partner i have drafted two marks six i've drafted 6 out of 8 marks for you 
every paragraph end hamza i've given you a mark 1 so you can catch up the number of marks given after the total eight so you have to complete the rest of the answer yourself right yes exactly uh, you can write in the paper case paper as i wrote above right okay you go back to the next situation is everyone ready for the second situation marston company so you open your word processor and you put the next heading marston company and in the marston company you start reading the case and any problem you identified you will start putting it under the march 10 company okay let's let's read the march 10 company right march 10 is located some distance from the rest of the group and is audited by the local office of james company so do we have the same auditor james company is a group auditor and james company is also the auditor of march 10 company so do we have the same auditor here everyone So is the same auditor performing it? Yes. Your review, your review has found that there was no formal reporting from the subsidiary audit team to the group team, and the communication were often not documented. Do you believe this is the first issue? Your review has found that there was no formal reporting from the subsidiary audit team to the group audit team. and there the communications were not often documented do you believe there has to be a proper communication between the group auditor and the component auditor whether they are the same firm or they are dissimilar firm even they are same firms or they are dissimilar firms like cameroon company you need to ensure there is a proper communication and there is a proper formal reporting between the component auditor and the group auditor whether the component auditor is the same firm or the component auditor is a dissimilar firm so should i copy this point control c and should i take it on my word processor as my first issue under the marston company and i paste it over here in the exam context next you go back to the marston company there was no evidence that the group audit team had obtained a copy of subsequent events review performed on marston company is that another issue no evidence that the group audit team has obtained a copy of the subsequent event review performed by marston company do you understand subsequent event review is so important for every component or every subsidiary of the group can the subsequent events impact the group audit can the subsequent event impact the consolidation consolidated financial statements so there is no evidence that the group audit team has obtained a copy of the subsequent event review performed by marston company control c that's the second issue and you go back and you paste it over here in your word processor as the second problem control v see how easy computer based exams are you can copy paste and then develop your point and there was no evidence that the group related parties had been communicated to subsidiary team there was no evidence that the group related parties are communicated to the subsidiary team so will the subsidiary auditor know about the related parties what if what if there is a transaction between the related parties at a subsidiary level D does the subsidiary auditor has any information about the related parties so will the subsidiary auditor gather any evidence about related parties because they don't know about them so so many times the examiner used the word no evidence no evidence so the moment you see the word no evidence that automatically becomes a problem so how many issues we have here in this small case of marston company 3 see you copied them now you need to develop them into an answer three issues if we write three issues and a two actions we'll get to five so that's not a difficult task right so let's copy these three issues i found for marston company and let's take it on my word processor and let's write an answer on my word processor for marston company so you found the issue that's the first target after you found the issues your next target is to convert the issues into a proper answer so first read then plan and then write read plan write so if read we planned now we writing your review has found there was no formal reporting from the subsidiary team to the group team so no formal reporting that becomes the first heading under the no formal reporting you raise the issue your review found number 1 
there was no formal reporting from the subsidiary team to the group team. So it was subsidiary team to the group team. And you write under. There, there should be a proper correspondence and reporting between the group auditor, between the component auditor, sorry, between the component auditor and the group auditor and the component auditor should keep group auditor up to date of any issues or problems in the component audit. So you started with an action first. You started with an action first. You, you're telling your review has found there was no formal reporting. So you're telling examiner there should be a proper reporting. There should be a proper correspondence between them and then for a stop. And then after the action, you come to the issue. So you, you have different ways of writing answer. Sometime you start with the action first and the issue after. So the question was saying your review has found there was no formal reporting. So you started with the action first and now you come to the issue. If there is no formal reporting between the component auditor and the group auditor, it means lots of issues or problems at the component level had not been communicated had not been communicated to the group auditor and the group auditor and the group auditor could be unaware of the issues at Mars then company as it is a significant subsidiary. I hope you read the case yesterday. Examiner told us that every subsidiary is significant. So Marston company is also a significant subsidiary. And because there is no formal reporting between the component auditor and the group auditor, it means that lots of issues or problems at the component level had not been communicated to the group auditor and the group auditor is unaware, is possibly unaware of the issues at the Marston company and as it is a significant auditor. Right, so that's that's the issue. So there is no formal reporting between the component auditor and the group auditor, right? So uh, the group auditor is unaware of the issues at the March Den company, which is the subsidiary. So any issues at March Den company, any problems at the March Den company being a component, you will be unaware of it. So that's the, that's the first issue. One mark. So you got two marks under the first. The next, no evidence that the group audit team has obtained no evidence that the group audit team had obtained a copy of subsequent events. So next heading will become subsequent events, subsequent events. You tell examiner there has been no evidence that the group audit team had obtained a copy of subsequent event review performed on Marston company. This means if there is no evidence If there is no evidence that the group audit team had obtained a copy of subsequent event review performed on March 10 company, it means that the group auditor has not considered the impact of the subsequent events. The group auditor has not considered the adequacy of evidence gathered by component auditor, gathered by component auditor on the subsequent events. You should have reviewed them, right? You should have reviewed them as a group auditor 
so to know that the work performed by the component auditor on subsequent event is adequate. It means that the group auditor has not considered the adequacy of evidence gathered by the component auditor on subsequent event and has not considered the impact of any subsequent event at the component level at the component level on the group on the group consolidated financial statements is is it a significant subsidiary what if there is a significant subsequent event at a component level will that significant subsequent event at a component level impact the group financial statements definitely but did you bothered about reviewing the subsequent event do you have any evidence that you reviewed the subsequent events performed by the component auditor? So I think the group auditor is not playing the role expected out of the group auditor. So there is no evidence that they reviewed the subsequent events performed by the component auditor. That means you are unaware of the subsequent events happening at the stage of the component entity. And that means there might be a very significant uh, subsequent event which must have gone unaddressed. So that's the issue. Then you write the action for subsequent events. It is the responsibility. It is the responsibility of the group auditor. It is the responsibility of the group auditor to review working papers of potential risky areas and important areas of each significant component of each significant component to ensure all significant matters all significant matters are known to the group auditor all significant matters are known to the group auditor and has been adjusted in the consolidated financial statement if needed consolidated financial statement if needed so you wrote an action one mark so I've wrote a four marks answer for you and you continue writing the rest yourself. But I hope you're getting a track here everyone that throughout my answer I almost wrote a four marks answer for March 10 company and I almost wrote a six marks answer for the Cameroon company. That's like a 10 marks answer. But anywhere in my 10 mark answer I didn't bothered about using the terminology quality. I didn't bothered about telling it is a bad quality. I was just focused on picking up the problem and justifying the implication of the problem or justifying why it is a problem. So anytime in the exam paper, you need to understand one thing quickly before I tell you how you write a conclusion. Now this is something very important for the student. Note it down carefully. A student guidance. Let's put that in red. That's very important. And you should note it down very, very carefully. Student guidance. Listen to me carefully. When you are attempting a question on ethical, professional, and quality control issue in continuation from the session yesterday, first read the case carefully and pick up the issue. Whatever the issue is, whether it is an ethical issue or it's uh, it's other than an ethical issue. First read the case carefully and pick up the issue. Having picked the issue, now think why it is an issue. You pick the issue, right? You you picked the issue, right? So if you picked the issue in exam paper, then you have to justify why you picked the issue. So having picked the issue now think why it is an issue. Uh, Muhammad Arsalan, uh, when the tutor is conducting a webinar, your focus is to teach a topic. So if you put some very lengthy questions and you expect the tutor to respond to them during the live webinar, that's impossible. And that is the reason for every webinar conducted. There is a WhatsApp group. So that is an opportunity that you can put your question on the WhatsApp group and expect that the tutor replies to them in 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 after completing the webinar. So uh, in the webinar, if the tutor is asking you a question, you should respond to him. You should say yes and no uh, so that I know you're understanding it. But if you have a question, please put that on a WhatsApp group, right? Because you're raising a lot of questions 
and it's very difficult for me to focus on the question. Either I can focus on the word file or I can focus on your question. I hope you're clear with that. Student guidance. First, read the case carefully and pick up the issue. Having picked up, having picked the issue, now think why it is an issue. Explain the issue considering the implication, considering the implication of the issue on audit. Whether the report has been signed or the report is to be signed. Consider the implication of the issue on the audit as we were considering above. So that's how you're going down with it. Pick up the issue. Now think why it's an issue and explain the issue considering the implication of the issue. Uh, a well explained issue could be two to three sentences long. Could be two to three sentences long maximum. 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 So that is one well explained issue could be two to three sentences long to fetch one mark. I hope you're all clear on that and recommend an action where necessary where necessary. There can be some issues without action. Don't forcefully don't forcefully write action for every issue right action for every issue. Is that clear? Is that summary guidance clear to all of you? Will that help you a long way in writing an answer for ethical professional and quality control issues? Now listen to me carefully when we were reading the examiner criticism yesterday examiner was saying you should give a conclusion at the end of the day right now. Look, look at this question. We started yesterday on the day and the question basically was the question was saying comment on the quality right so when you are answering a question like such you first answer a question like this see this is how the format would look like you go back to the see this you first put Cameroon company you then put Marston company. You then put uh, the next one, Dean company. You then put Honor company. Now, once you complete the answer, you will give a conclusion at the end because the question was asking you comment on the quality of planning and performance of the group audit. Now, can we comment as a conclusion? The uh, overall group audit, the overall performance of group audit seems to lack quality seems to lack quality seems to lack quality as there are numerous instances there are numerous instances as discussed above as discussed above for each subsidiary as discussed above for each subsidiary where the role of the group auditor where the role of the group auditor was not well performed where the role of the group auditor was not well performed and there were instances where the group auditor uh, breach the responsibilities expected where the group auditor breached the responsibilities expected from the uh, expected from and uh, sorry uh, where the group auditor breach the responsibilities which responsibilities when there were instances where the group auditor breach responsibilities needed of them responsibilities needed of from them needed from them stop see this is a conclusion you're just telling examiner that the overall performance of the group audit seems to lack quality because there were numerous instances in Cameroon Marston Dean and Honor you're not repeating those instances right as discussed above for each subsidiary where the role of the group auditor was questionable have we found some questionable role of the group auditor in Cameroon company where the engagement partner was giving some very wrong advices uh, we we found some issues with Marston company where the group auditor was bo not bothered about obtaining evidence about subsequent event. 
there was no proper communication between the group auditor and the component auditor so see this is the conclusion one at the end so you copy this conclusion and you take this conclusion to your word file and see this is the conclusion at the end of the answer the spellings and grammars are not checked so don't be worried about it so if you make a spelling mistake no need to correct it obviously i can correct it in the session but that's not your responsibility in the exam paper so can you find this conclusion is that what the examiner was looking for yesterday when we were looking at the criticism here see this criticism of the examiner right on the screen look at this it is important to remember that in a triple a exam is predominant dominantly the application and as such journal comments will not obtain credit often these will be restricted to a single concluding mark across the full question and as such candidates cannot obtain additional marks for repeating the same conclusion so have we given a single concluding mark across the full question at the end so the role of the group auditor was questionable in the whole uh, whole audit right there were lots of instances where the group auditor has not played the role whether there was whether there was no documentation whether there was no proper communication uh, whether they have not tested the subsidiaries independence competence and experience whatever so when you write the full answer at the end of the answer give a conclusion and conclusion should not be more than one sentence long because conclusion is the summary whenever the student write a conclusion the student starts to write an, another answer see my conclusion is just one sentence one full stop and that's conclusion examiner is saying you can get one mark for this one mark here as well for conclusion is that clear to all of you so from day 2 to day 3 the examiner report examiner criticism the way you read the question the way you identify the problems and the way you write them are you all clear on that and you need to watch my previous webinars on ethical professional and quality control issues which i have recommended you yesterday i hope you watch these uh, webinars at these hyperlinks june 21 march 21 and december 20 because in each of the previous webinar i have touched upon a different question this time around i'm more focused on doing the latest paper so if you watch the previous webinar along with this one it will really benefit you in terms of writing a very good answer to a question on ethical professional and quality control issues and you will not do the silly mistakes which which your examiner doesn't like is that clear with the day two agenda this was a continuation of the day two agenda and now we are starting with the day three is that clear should we move on to the agenda for day three now there are lots of uh, presentation met, uh, slides for you you can read through them uh, and understand uh, things by watching the previous webinars i've put some content on my presentation slides for ethical professional and quality control issues which is a self read material and you will be able to understand this and i've also given you the marking scheme okay now let's come to the day three okay so is everyone ready for the start of the day three specific agenda a look inside question number three of the recent paper and more interestingly to talk about a very important topic in the AAA paper which is completion and reporting stage so let's start with a day three specific agenda and you need to listen carefully for the first 15 minutes because that would be a real big breakthrough okay let's take on the fresh page and let's start with a specific agenda now for day three which is to look at the completion and reporting stage completion and reporting stage of AAA paper okay let's start with this okay now understand something very carefully when you look at the past papers uh, you know that your 100 marks paper has a section a and a section b right when you look into the section b uh, of the triple a paper and we are talking about uh, since september 
2018 when the new format came in right we know from the september 18 exams we used to have three questions in the paper before september 18 we used to have five questions in the paper right so since september 18 uh, when we had three questions in the paper and we look at the section b now section b has two questions we have question two and we have question three each worth 25 marks now in the last two exam settings uh, which is uh, september december 20 and which is the march june 21 the last two exam settings up, uh, published on acc website in these last two exam settings examiner has now made the question number three as a completion and reporting question as a completion and reporting question which is very logical right the question number one is a planning question so examiner is going in a very logical order now the question number one is a planning question and the last question of the paper question number three is a completion and reporting question right now when you look at the exam settings uh, other than the recent one suppose you look at the september 18 exam setting you look at the december 18 exam setting available you look at the march june 19 exam setting available uh, you look at the september december 19 exam setting available you look at the march 20 exam setting available in all these exam settings examiner has used the question number two as the completion and reporting question but in the last two recent exam settings or in the last three or four recent exam settings because we're looking at a hybrid paper september december and march june examiner has now made the question three as a completion and reporting question but when you look at these exam papers over here the question two was completion and reporting so don't get uh, distracted uh, i i believe when you look at the september 21 exams actually there will be a question three on completion and reporting because that's the recent track of the examiner now irrespective whether you get a completion and reporting question in three or two you have to understand that a completion and a reporting question is a mandatory part of a hundred marks paper right completion and reporting question completion and reporting stage question is a mandatory part of the AAA paper just like a question on risk just like a question on audit risk and risk of material misstatement or a business risk so just like you have a default question number one you have a default question on completion and reporting but i think the examiner has now made the right track of the triple a paper the first question is a planning question and the last question is a completion and reporting question which is very logical and the middle question the question number two can be from anywhere in the syllabus the middle question can be can test any syllabus area it can test other assignments it can test ethical and professional issues we just saw the two questions the question number two is right in one of the question two we had uh, quality control issues in march june 21 and even in the september december 21 in question two we had the ethical and professional issues but don't get distracted in the question two you can also get other assignments and i hope you know your other assignment syllabus area which we will be covering on the last day of the webinar is everyone clear with the uh, overview of uh, completion and reporting stage and how important that is to pass the paper because it's something mandatory in your 100 marks paper so you cannot be weak in this area now let's start with the webinar and let's see what we need to focus on now in this webinar what i am focusing on in this webinar i am focusing on the two recent papers just to give you a guidance of the question three and the question three from the two recent exam papers one being the september december 20 which i will focus as my second priority and one is the march june 21 which i'll focus as my first priority and will dig inside both to see what a question ask what is the expectation of the examiner what exactly a question three expects from a student what is the marking scheme what you should know to pass a question three of the AAA paper so let's start the journey and let's start to understand one by one each one of them and and the break will come uh, 30 minutes later at exactly 10 o'clock 
10 p.m. Pakistan Standard Time. So don't expect a break coming in, in the next 30 minutes. 10 p.m. the break will come. We are still into the live session because a lot of students are asking break. We're just into one hour, right? And you got frustrated. Okay, let's start with the analysis. <clears throat> what to expect at the completion and reporting stage. Okay, there are two articles I'm recommending. Exam technique article part five and auditor report to those charges given. Now these are the two articles which you should read after the day three comes to an end. Exam technique article part five and auditor report to those charged with governance. These articles are given to you in the handout section of the webinar. Then I would be doing analysis of the examiner report just like I did the analysis yesterday of the March June 21 examiner report. I'll be looking at two questions. So question three from September December 20 and question three from March June 21 and any of the question left unattended. You will do it as your home assignment. And you will also watch the previous webinar on the same topic. Which previous webinar? I've recommended three webinars which are very good on reporting. March 21 webinar, the December 20 webinar, and the September 19 webinar. These are three important webinars you should watch. Because if you want to be good on reporting, you should watch every webinar recommended. Because there are so many rules in reporting, and I cannot cover them. I cannot cover every one of them in one webinar. So if you want to cover every reporting rule, you should watch the three preceding webinars along with this one. And that will give you a very good idea of reporting from the AAA perspective. I hope you will watch the previous webinars, right? Okay, now moving forward and looking at what to look at in a reporting and a completion question. Now, first of all, It is important to read through all examining team articles on reporting. Number one, extract knowledge from the articles and maintain notes before you sit to practice. Now, I would suggest that first develop the notes on reporting. You should know the rules of reporting because if you don't know the rules of reporting, you can do a mess in the answer. If you don't know when to use an emphasis of a matter paragraph or you don't know when to use a cam paragraph, or you don't know when to issue a qualified opinion or when to issue an adverse opinion. You are you are unclear about different rules of reporting. You can do a mess in a reporting question. So first read the examiner articles, watch my webinars, make your notes. Once you know the notes have been prepared, now sit down and practice. And practice the recent papers from September 18 to June 21. When you are practicing read examiner reports because examiner reports will be very very productive from September 18 to June 21 because they will give you constructive criticism of the do's and don'ts. Be aware that reporting question is not just asking for an impact on opinion. It's at it's at time broader and include actions matters critical appraisal of the report and even impact on the audit report. So if you just go to the exam hall expecting that a reporting question will ask you just an impact on an opinion, just an impact on the opinion, you're taking a very narrow version. You're taking a very narrow version of the reporting question. You should, you should solve the past papers on reporting and you will imagine that the past papers on reporting is not just an impact on opinion. At times a reporting question asks you actions, at times they ask you matters at the at times they ask you a critical appraisal of the report and at times they ask you an impact on the audit report not just not just opinion and in my previous webinar i did make a clarification what is impact on opinion and what is impact on audit report so you need to watch the previous webinars for that so be and be careful about the depth of a reporting question understand the difference between impact on opinion Understand the difference between impact on the financial statements and understand the difference between an impact on report. These are three different terminologies in a reporting question. At times the examiner asks you explain the impact on opinion. At times the examiner asks you explain the impact on the financial statement. And at times the examiner asks you explain the impact on audit report. 
you should know the difference of the terminology opinion financial statements and report they cannot have the same answer so in my previous webinars i've recommended you i have carefully constructed the difference for student so please watch it and be clear you should be clear with the reporting requirements and you should be clear with the reporting rules to be good in a reporting question but if your rules are bad and you don't know what comes in the past paper you don't know the requirements of the reporting question you don't know the rules of the reporting question you will fail in a reporting question right so it's it's very very important Muhammad Hasib, you need to find you need to watch the previous webinars for what is impact on opinion what is impact on financial statement and what is impact on audit report because i've covered these things in my previous webinar so i will not be repeating them you have a library of webinars right so that's a, that is a wonderful resources you have by acc pakistan you can just go down watch them and these th these libraries are benefiting hundreds of students or rather thousands of students globally okay now knowing the report knowing the understanding of the report knowing the steps in front of your screen uh, let's start the analysis of this webinar in terms of reporting now let me open the questions for you first uh, let's go down and look at the reporting questions now first thing which you need to understand is that our report <clears throat> our reporting question Sorry, a question three or a question two. Set. Sorry, set at completion and reporting stage. Is not just a question asking you your reporting knowledge. The 25 marks question, whether it is two or three, is not just asking a 25 marks reporting knowledge. It is a combined question. Try to understand this. It is a combined question. It is not just a reporting question. It is a completion and a reporting stage question. So in the 25 marks, there will be certain marks from completion and there will be certain marks from reporting. So it is not just a question which is asking your reporting knowledge. So be very careful right now. If you look at the question number three of the March June 21 exams, just to see how diversified that was. And just to be very sure it was not just a reporting question. Let me show that you on on the practice platform. I hope you can all see the practice platform in front. Let's move from the question two to the question three. I hope you can all see the question three now in front of your screen, right? Can you confirm that you can see the question three in front of your screen? Okay, now just just be very watchful. I'm reading the right hand side of the screen. It is the first of July. You are a manager in Beth and company, a firm of chartered certified accountant responsible for the audit for the year ended 31st of March, right? So 31st March is the year in and it is the first of July. It is the 1st of July 20x5. Look at the dates. It is a reporting and completion question. The year end is 31st March. We are standing after the year end. It is the 1st of July. So are we at the completion and reporting stage? Are we, uh, are we ahead of the year end? April, May, April, May, June. So we are standing on the 1st of July. So are we standing at the stage of completion and reporting after the year end? So please watch the dates very carefully in AAA paper. Look at the date where we are. Look at the year end. So are we before the year end or are we after the year end? Tell me. Why are we after? Why are we after the year end? Because it's a question set at a completion and reporting stage. The following exhibits available on the left hand side of the screen. So the exhibits available on the left hand side of the screen provides information relevant to the question, right? So there are two exhibits given on the left hand side of the screen. One is an audit completion review and one is an update on the draft audit report. Can you see the two exhibits? 
one exhibit is on the completion stage of the audit audit completion review and one exhibit is on the auditor report so is it just a reporting question no it is a completion and reporting question so one exhibit is looking at the completion aspects of the audit and one exhibit is looking at the report aspect now you have two requirements you have a requirement a for 20 marks and you have a requirement b for five marks and you have a response option word processor now requirement a for 20 marks is a completion requirement requirement a is from the exhibit number one and requirement b is from the exhibit two now whenever you look at a question two and question three it's so simple because when you have two exhibits and when you have two requirements it's very sure that one exhibit has one requirement the second exhibit has a second requirement so look at the first exhibit first requirement sorry on your screen the first requirement is right here see this the first requirement using the information in exhibit one so is the examiner saying that the requirement a is for exhibit one is that very sure now using the information in exhibit one not exhibit two right comment on the matters to be considered and explain the evidence you should expect to find in the review of the working papers so using the information in exhibit one comment on the matters now was i clear on this requirement of a question yesterday on day two that this is a very very important question which comes at the stage of completion and reporting using the information in exhibit one comment on the meta did i did i explain to you this yesterday everyone you cannot say no if you were in the live webinar comment on the matters to be considered and can you look at this word and because students don't look at the word and in the exam paper i don't know what happens to them is there a break and so comment on the matter and explain the evidence you would expect to find during your review of the working paper two requirements so this question is asking us two things number one we need to comment on the matters number two we need to explain the evidence in explain the evidence you should expect to find in your file review so two things right now how many issues we have expect to find okay comment on the meta each matter commented is one mark and each evidence is one mark each evidence written each evidence written is one mark so such a simple marking scheme right now let's see how many how many issues we have in this paper on which we need to comment on the matters and explain the evidence is it a reporting question no this is a completion question so this is set at the completion stage and this is most favorite examiner question at a completion stage so this is a favorite examiner question on completion stage asking you comment on the matters and explain the evidence and you go back and you see how many issues we have to comment on the matters and explain the evidence how many issues we have can you see the screen the first issue we have is the railway operating license and going concern purchase customer list and chairman statement control c and you come back to the word processor we have three issues issues in the case study three so for every issue we will read the case study we will comment on the methods and we'll see explain the evidence obviously i will not be doing all the three with you in the live class but i will be starting and you will be ending so we'll start and you end because we still need to do another question from september december 20 paper so that's the first one right the requirement so we'll pick up the railway operating license and going concern seven marks and in seven marks we need to comment on the methods and explain the evidence then we pick up the eight marks purchase customer list comment on the matters and explain the evidence then you pick up the chairman statement comment on the matters and explain the evidence and i'll show you the way to write the answer is everyone clear with the first requirement before i drill and tell you what comment on matters exactly mean and before i tell you what exactly evidence mean so two terminologies to address and i think i did touch upon comment on the matters yesterday right okay now come to the second requirement back to the practice platform now 
Can you see the second requirement on your screen for five marks? Just five marks. With reference to exhibit two. Now, is this requirement in relation to exhibit two? So should we be looking at the exhibit one now? No. With reference to exhibit two and assuming that no further adjustments will be made to the financial statement. No further adjustments will be made to the financial statement in relation to the railway operating license or to the chairman statement. Evaluate the appropriateness of the draft audit report produced by the supervisor. So has the report already produced and you need to evaluate whether the report is right or wrong five marks. Now see how you read a question and how I read a question. This is a question set at the stage of report just for five marks and the question on report is this. So just a five marks reporting requirement and a 20 marks completion requirement. So which is heavy weight here. The heavy weight here is completion. Now understand. Look at this with reference to exhibit two and assuming assuming that no further adjustment will be made to the financial statement in relation to the railway operating license or the chairman statement assuming no further adjustment will be made no further adjustment will be made by whom by the management so does that mean the management is reluctant making adjustments when you read the case it could be possible that the auditor is asking for adjustments and no further adjustment will be made to the financial statement by whom by the management agree assuming that no further adjustment will be made to the financial statement in relation to the railway operating license number one and in relation to the chairman statement number two evaluate the appropriateness of the draft auditor report produced by the supervisor evaluate the appropriateness of the draft audit report produced so report has already been produced right you need to see is it right is it wrong so is it about critically appraising the report produced by the supervisor is it right or wrong and we have five marks and every every appropriateness will give us one mark so assuming no further adjustments in number one railway operating license that's one issue railway operating license that's one issue and assuming no further adjustment in the chairman statement that's the second issue evaluate the appropriateness of the report produced so each each appropriateness you are evaluating each appropriateness each comment sorry each comment on the appropriateness will fetch you one mark so there might be something right in the audit report produced or there might be something wrong in the audit report produced so you need to comment on the appropriateness and each comment will fetch you one mark now tell me if you're a clever student before the break no further adjustments will be made to the financial statement in relation to railway operating license or the chairman statement does that mean does that mean we had three issues above we had an issue of railway operating license where the examiner is saying assuming no adjustment is made so is the management disagreeing with the auditor in the first issue yes or no okay Assuming no further adjustment is made in the chairman statement. Does that mean that the uh, management is disagreeing with the auditor on the chairman statement? Does that mean the uh, uh, management is disagreeing with the auditor on the chairman statement? Yes. Okay. What about purchased customer list? Examiner is not telling us something about the purchased customer list. So does that mean that the management has agreed with the auditor on the purchase customer list because on two areas the management has disagree with you no further adjustment will be made in the two areas but what about the third area has the management agreed with you on the third area is, is that sure right so please be clever when you read the case if the examiner is saying that the management is not making adjustments in the two areas what about the third one this is very realistic that it's very obvious that in the third area the management 
must have agreed to the auditor. So there are two areas, the railway operating license, where the management disagree with the auditor in red. And the cust chairman statement where the management disagree with the auditor red. But there is a purchase customer list where the management agreed with the auditor or the auditor agreed with the management. At least both are on the same page. Do you agree with me? On the purchase customer list, the auditor and the management is on the same page. Right? No, uh, who is asking that going concern question? Uh, railway operating license and going concern is one issue, right? Examiner is using the short form railway operating license. Railway operating license and going concern is one accumulative issue, right? So don't get distracted that railway operating license and going concern are two different issues. That's that's one complete statement railway operating license and going concern, right? Is that clear? So try to understand the question first before you answer it. And a lot of time the student don't see how much time you need to spend in reading and planning the question. Then you understand it. Then you understand what is to be done in the exam pressure. Reading a question this way for a student is so difficult because you are not bothered about reading it even at home. If you make a habit of reading a question at home, that habit will go to the actual exam paper. And if you read the question well, the chances of writing a wrong answer gets eliminated. But if you don't read a question well, then the chances of writing a wrong answer increases. Right? Is that clear to all of you? So is the question clear? One stage of the question is completion, uh, which we will be solving right after the break. And one step of this is report, which again we will be solving right after the break. Now, what I want from you during the break is that during the course of the break, look at this practice platform. And on the practice platform, we have this question number three. So if you can just start to read the exhibit one, which is audit completion review this one at least at least read the first issue railway operating license and going concern and read the second issue purchase customer list and the chairman statement read all three of them right and read the second exhibit which is about the draft audit report that will save a lot of time when I start to answer the question March June 21 question number three so after we complete this question today that means at least in this webinar I have touched upon every recent question. I touched upon the question number one on the first day, day one and day two. I touched upon the question two on the day two and day three today. And I'm touching upon the question three on the day three today. And if something left incomplete, I will be touching upon the same on day four tomorrow. So that means after this webinar, at least the latest paper has gone into the webinar, right? So that means the September December 20 paper was touched upon more in the last webinar. So if you watch my last webinar, the June 21, I was more focused on September December 20. So that means you get a very rigorous practice of the recent paper. So you cannot say the latest paper was very difficult. So I hope you can control the latest paper after the webinar ends. Is that clear to all of you? Uh, Numan, I've already covered reporting to those charged with governance in my previous webinar. So again and again, I'm saying watch my previous webinar. Do you expect everything to be covered in three hours or 15 hours of this free webinar? So you need to appreciate the fact that ACC is organizing a resource for you for which ACC is not even charging you. And in this 15 hours, ACCA is giving you an idea and ACC is giving you a direction where you can go and watch the library which ACC has maintained for you. And if you carefully use the library ACC has given to you and you don't want to incur any cost on your education, you can still pass the AAA paper. You just need to pay the exam fees and you can use the free resources. And there are so many students who are just using the free resources of ACCA, these webinars, and just incurring the exam entry cost and passing the ACC qualification. Right. 
Are you clear, everyone? And Molly, I don't understand your question. If you can just raise your question back again. Right, so I think you should appreciate the webinars. You should appreciate these libraries maintained by ACCA free of cost for all of you and benefiting thousands of students in different parts of the world. Okay, it's time for a break now. I hope you like the first part of the session and uh, it's like five minutes short of 10 in Pakistan. So it's like 9.55 p.m. in Pakistan. So let's resume after a 15 minutes break at 10.10 uh, 10 p.m. Right, so 10.10 10 p.m. Pakistan Standard Time, we have a break. Let me put that in the chat box. Break till 10.10 10 p.m. 10.10 10 p.m. Pakistan time. So please take a break, come back at 10.10. 10. We'll start with the last stage of day three. Okay, we're off to a break, right? I'll I'll start to speak with you uh, at 10, 10 p.m.
Okay, welcome back, uh, everyone. After the break, I hope you can all hear me. Uh, we are just like uh, a minute away from the scheduled end of the break time, uh, but I just want a confirmation that all of you can hear me. Okay, thank you so much for confirming that. So we are just like a minute away from the scheduled end of the break time. So in courtesy, I have to wait till that time. And we need to start drilling the question number three from the latest exams, the March June 21, right in front of your screen. Okay, then that is it. Let's let's resume back. Uh, welcome back to the day three again. Uh, we were discussing the question number three. We were doing the analysis of the question number three right before the break. So let's start the journey uh, reading, drilling and understanding uh, the question three of the very latest exam setting the March June 21. And let's see how to write a very good answer for the question number three. Now, when you look at this question in front of your screen, you you read the right hand side of the screen. So there is nothing much important on the right hand side of the screen. We just coming to know that it's the 1st of July and we know the year end is 31st of March. So we are after the year end. So that means we are at the completion stage of the audit. And then on the left hand side of the screen, we got to know the two exhibits. The first is a completion review exhibit and then is the draft audit report. Let's first start with the completion and review exhibit where the requirement is comment on the meta and explain the evidence. Now, let's take on the word file quickly. Now, when a question asks you comment on the meta and explain the evidence, which is just over here, if I can just copy that down and we take it on the fresh page here and start the analysis. Now, when the question asks you comment on the meta and explain the evidence, I was telling you yesterday in the day two session, uh, rather the examiner was telling you that in the article and I just reinforce that that the comment on the meta is the same way you write a ROM answer using the four step model using the four step using the four step using the four steps, right? And uh, you all know the four steps, right? The first step was materiality, then the then it was the accounting treatment, then it was the risk and impact, right? So examiner was saying, in the same way you write a ROM answer, you will be writing the comment on the meta answer uh, in the case the question comes on uh, evidence. I hope you're all clear on that, right? Okay, now what to do? In the same way you write a ROM answer using the four step model. Now that means, you will have uh, you will have materiality as a meta you will have accounting treatment as a meta you will have risk as a meta and the impact on financial statement as a meta because they were basically the four steps now my concern factor is that a lot of time the student only thinks about the four steps when they are commenting on a meta you need to understand that there might be a meta which is which is an accounting meta, right? If it is an accounting meta, then in the case of an accounting meta, the four steps are very valid. Materiality, accounting treatment, risk, and the impact on the financial statement. But what if uh, when the examiner is asking you comment on the meta and there is something like a non-accounting meta, just like uh, a chairman statement. Now a chairman statement is not an accounting meta. A chairman statement is an is another information in 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 the annual report. I hope you all agree with me. So the chairman statement doesn't seems like an accounting meta. Uh, railway operating license and a going concern is an accounting meta. Uh, purchase customer list seems like an intangible asset is an accounting meta. But chairman statement is another information. 
So is is chairman statement a non accounting meta? So can we have a materiality of the chairman statement? Can we have an accounting treatment of the chairman statement? No. So that means comment on the matter is the same. You write a wrong answer. That's perfectly fine. But if in comment on the matter you get a non accounting matter, then in the case of the non accounting matter, the comment on the matters will be case specific. That means you need to read the case of the chairman statement and from the chairman statement you need to find what matters will you comment on. So not necessarily every time comment on the matter is the four step model. In a certain case. The comment on the matter will be a case exercise that from the case you read the case and you understand what matters to comment on and that means in the session today you will get to know that comment on the matter is not just materiality accounting treatment risk and impact it can be more than that is that clear to all of you but every time you comment on a matter in an evidence question you get one mark per comment right okay thank you let's start the journey and then explain the evidence now in my webinar today i'll not be telling you the rules of evidence because i have told you the rules of evidence in my previous webinar so don't expect the rules of evidence i will be teaching you if you want to know the rules of evidence then watch the previous webinar watch the previous webinar i'll just be putting the answer uh, i'll not be putting the answer of explain the evidence you should expect to find in the file because the rules of evidence watch the previous webinar and uh, formulate uh, the answer formulate the answer for evidence yourself by watching the previous webinar so i'll not be writing the part of evidence for you because i've done evidence so many times in the previous webinar that i don't want to repeat that comment on the matter i'm doing it because i want to guide you about the four step model and what will you do for a chairman statement right is that clear to all of you so will you be able to do the evidence yourself by watching the previous webinars Will you be writing the evidence yourself? Okay, that's good. Thank you. Okay, let's let's go down first with the railway operating license seven marks comment on the matters. Okay, let's take on the practice platform audit completion and review. So in audit completion and review, we have the first paragraph here, which is uh, about this. I'm just copying the information from here and just give me one minute. If I can take this to my word file because that will give me a large space to read things with you. Just give me one minute. Sorry again if I can just paste information here. Okay, can you see this uh, on your word file uh, in front? I've just copied that from the practice platform onto my word file. So I get some space to do a proper analysis with you, right? So I just copied from the practice platform. You can see over here. I, I opened up the exhibit one and from the exhibit one, I copied the information up to the railway operating license and going concern. Now I'm going back to my word file, so I don't need to switch back and back again. I'm reading from here. Matt Matty a company is a listed transport company. That's important information. So highlight listed transport company which provides train and bus services. The audit of Medi for the year ending 31st of March is nearly complete and you are reviewing the working paper. So does that tell me we are standing at a completion stage? It's a listed company and the audit is nearly complete and you are reviewing the working papers. Medi company is a new audit client of the company of the audit firm. a new audit client. So is that an important information? I might need to use it somewhere when answering the question. It's a listed company. That's important. I might need to use it somewhere. It's a new audit client. I might need to use it somewhere when I'm answering my question and we are standing at a completion stage of the audit. The previous auditor issued an unmodified opinion on the financial statement. So the previous auditor issued an unmodified opinion. Let's see which opinion will I be issuing because this time I am performing the audit. Medi companies draft financial statement recognize revenue of 60.1 million. I can use the figure of revenue for finding the materiality if needed. Comment on the materiality. The profit before tax of 10.5 million. 
so that can be used for finding the materialities wherever possible and the total assets of 28.4 million so see how i read the case with you i just highlighted important information now by the end of the first paragraph i know it is a listed company i know we are standing at the completion stage this is the new audit client and we know the profit revenue and the total asset value for finding the materiality the audit supervisor has brought the following matters for your attention you are a manager right let's see what matters have been brought for your attention the first matter is railway operating license and going concern let's see what's the issue comment on the matters so let's prepare our answer comment on the matters we have total of uh, seven marks i think if i'm not mistaken let, let me confirm the number of marks seven and in the seven we are not just commenting on the matters we need to write the evidence as well right so let's start the journey first with the first meta railway operating license Meti company has operated a national railway service for the last 19 years okay Meti company's national railway operations have been subject to adverse publicity in the last 12 months subject to adverse publicity in the last 12 months is is that a strange event for the business that they're running a rail service for the last 19 years but they have been subjected to ad ad adverse publicity in the last 12 months so can can an adverse publicity brings a doubt on your going concern can it affects your reputation can it affects your goodwill as a company so adverse publicity over the last 12 months in relation to unreliability of its services including the late running of the train so there has been some adverse publicity in the last 12 months in relation to some unreliability of the services including the late running of the train so that's that's becoming my first sorry that's becoming my first issue let me copy that first issue before i see how to comment on this not let's write it here brainstorming brain storming and in the brainstorming this becomes my first issue adverse publicity now as a result of the adverse publicity uh, because uh, in relation to some unreliability of the services including the late running of trains if you go down this paragraph can you see that the national railway generated 40.2 million of revenue in 20x5 last year it was 47.2 million has the revenue gone down because of this adverse publicity can you find out how much is the decline in the uh, revenue revenue gone down in the last 12 months because of adverse publicity uh, can anyone find the percentage of revenue going down over here see this last year it was 47.2 million this year it's uh, 40.2 million okay the revenue has gone down by 14.83 percent okay so does that mean the, the adverse publicity is taking a negative impact on the financial numbers right okay and how much has the profit gone down the pre-tax profit this year is 11.2 the last year the pre-tax profit was 13.3 so how much has been the decline in the profit because of this adverse publicity uh, the profit gone down by 15.7 percent now is that an important information that, that there has been an adverse publicity and can you see the adverse publicity is already resulting in the revenue going down and the profit going down right okay see how i use how i'm using the information okay let's go back okay revenue is down down by 17.4 which percentage is right 14.83 or 17.4 revenue gone down because one student is saying the revenue gone down is 17.4 it's 14.83 okay that sets the majority of the answer perfectly fine thank you okay the license to operate i'm reading the third line the license to operate the national railway is put out to tender by the national government every five years so every five years the government put the tender for operating the national railway so the license to operate the national railway is put out to tender by the national government every five year meti company's existing license is due for renewal on the 28th of feb 20x6 so your license is due for renewal on 28th of feb 20x6 that's the foreseeable future right uh, the year end of the company was what the year end of the company was 31st of march 
so the license is renew uh, is due for renewal on the 28th of feb 20x6 so is that in in the definition of a foreseeable future is that the definition of a foreseeable future 12 months after the balance sheet date going concern right so when the auditor is evaluating the going concern is the auditor evaluating the 12 months after the balance sheet date okay so the license is due for renewal on the 28th of feb so let's write this next point existing license is due for renewal on 28th of feb control c control v the current tendering process is approaching completion for the license and despite the recent operational problems meti was informed on the 30th of june that the company that the company was the government preferred option so is, is the government still preferring meti for this uh, this license on the 30th of june that the company was the government's preferred option so is there a high chances you might get this license even despite the adverse publicity so far so forth everyone okay this was on the understanding that the company would address the recent criticism of the poor service level. so if the company is able to address the criticism the government will give you the license full stop the company was also informed that the tender would still be subject to a detailed review in one month time prior to being awarded so is there a crit is there an issue coming here the company was informed that the tender will still be subjected to a detailed review in one month time so will, will the government review meti in one month time then decide whether to give them the license or not so the company was informed that the tender will be subjected to a detailed review in one month time so does that means in one month time the government will review your performance have you taken some actions to improve your service level and if the government fails to identify that the service levels have improved will the government reward you the license probably no right so the government will review uh, the performance of the company in one month time to assure whether the license should be given to them or not so that is the case study we've read the case so do you understand from the case that there are there are certain issues facing the going concern status of the company the revenue has gone down the profit has gone down there has been an adverse publicity the government will renew the government will review things in one month time and then decide whether to give them a license or not what if they don't get the license will that really impact the going concern status of the company because meti is a listed transport company which provides train and bus service so will that be really affected if they don't get the train license they might have a bus license right right so brainstorming done now tell me the national railway generated 40.2 million of revenue the national railway generated 40.2 million of revenue what is the total revenue of the company look at the first paragraph the total revenue of the company is 60.1 million so how significant is the revenue you are getting from the train service your total revenue as meti is 60.1 million in the first paragraph and the revenue you are getting from the train operation is 40.2 million so how significant is the operation how significant is the train operation how significant is the train operation to meti to meti okay one student is saying to meti so we should divide 40.2 million 40.2 million that that is the revenue from the train with the total revenue from the business 60.1 million 60.1 million so how significant it is almost like 67 percent of the total revenue okay next plus profit how much is the profit we're coming from the train operation the profit coming from the train operation is 11.2 million and the total profit of the company is uh, like uh, okay sorry that's the pre-tax profit so, sorry that's the pre-tax profit and we have the post-tax profit so we cannot compare it leave leave it out leave it out so that's quite a significant part of the revenue ends the story now we need to comment on the matters how will we comment on the matters will we find materiality accounting treatments no because it's a going concern matter so the first comment on the matter we will tell is that as per 
the relevant as per the relevant financial reporting standards as per the relevant financial reporting standard management of METI should disclose material uncertainties material uncertainties in relation to going concern of the train operations in the finance in the notes to the financial statement in the notes to the financial statement i hope you all agree is one i'm not naming is one here but that is the requirement of ias1 presentation of the financial statement that you should disclose the material uncertainties relating to going concern in your notes to the financial statement so is, is that the accounting treatment of is one that as per the relevant financial reporting standard the management of medi should disclose material uncertainties in relation to the going concern of the train operation in the notes to the financial statement so did we wrote the accounting treatment okay then you tell the train operation uh, the train operation is is material to the is material to medi as it contributes 66 percent or 67 percent to uh, of the total revenue of the total revenue of the company so have we mentioned uh, the materiality that the train operation is material to meti as it contributes 67 percent of the total revenue of the company full stop have we commented on the materiality of the train operation to the to the company and have we wrote the accounting treatment that as per the is1 or as per the relevant standard they should give disclosures of the material certainties full stop and you speak after the company the train operation the train operations is facing numerous uncertainties numerous uh, is facing uncertainties with regards to its foreseeable future with regards to its foreseeable future the train operation is facing uncertainties with regards to its foreseeable future as already due to adverse publicity as already due to adverse publicity the revenue has gone down by the revenue has gone down by 14.83 percent 14.83 percent and the pre-tax profit has gone down by 15.7 percent by 15.7 Person. The train operation is facing uncertainties with regards to its foreseeable future as already due to adverse publicity. The revenue has gone down by 14.83% and the pre-tax profit has gone down by 15.7% uh, and the government will be performing a review in one month time to decide whether whether the license will be rewarded to METI or not will be rewarded to METI or not so you're telling examiner that these are the uncertainties in the question they are facing an adverse publicity revenue has gone down profit has gone down and in one month time the government will be performing a review uh, to decide whether the license will be given to METI or not. Now, these are all the uncertainties which needs to be disclosed in the notes to the financial statement because it is a listed company. So, uh, all these uncertainties, all these uncertainties should be disclosed in the notes, should be disclosed in the notes for the attention of the shareholder, for the attention of the shareholder being a listed company being a listed company so see have we commented on the matters the first matter we commented on was the accounting treatment that as per the is1 we require a disclosure 
we then commented on the significant of the trans of the business materiality and we then commented on we then commented on that there are so many uncertainties so we 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 commented on the matter being the uncertainties now that was a case specific matter right the paragraph 3 is a case specific matter then fourth if no disclosure is given if no disclosure is given the financial statements of meti will be materially misstated we are solving the part 1 right in the part 2 examiner is saying the management is not adjusting anything but we are solving the part 1 in isolation of the part 2 so if no disclosure is given the financial statement of meti will be materially misstated because it's a going concern disclosure we talked about the risk and the impact for one mark now see we got four marks from comment on the matters is everyone clear on this have we wrote something out of the case study we found materiality we found a treatment we found something specific to the case the indicators of going concern did i mention the indicators of a going concern as a very specific matter paragraph number 3 right right you want to write this in a single paragraph you can write it in single paragraph you want to write it in four paragraphs like the one i wrote you can write it in four paragraph that doesn't make any difference at all is everyone clear with the understanding that's that's the bottom line so the matter can be materiality treatment risk impact but there could be a specific matter in the case study which only you will get to know when you're writing a case study right right the financial statement should be prepared on a breakup basis sakina that's too harsh ruling the company is just facing some material uncertainties and that should be disclosed in the notes to the financial statement breakup basis is the last resort breakup basis comes at the time when the company is liquidating meti company is not liquidating right meti company is not just running a train service they're also running a bus service the, the, the business is not coming to an end so a lot of time the student takes a very harsh ruling in the exam paper that the company is closing down and the financial should be prepared on a breakup basis that's not the case you should just keep yourself to a material uncertainty in the exam paper and you just keep yourself down to disclosure in the financial statement that is it never think about a breakup basis okay now after this you have to write evidence evidence in working paper file will you be able to write evidence in the working paper file how many marks are we left with total marks were eight so we got four so you that means you need to write three evidences three evidences in the file we got four marks right almost from the drafting above right let's look at the next issue the next one the chairman statement because that's where we need to uh, think realistically the next issue uh, the issue i'm skipping is the purchase customer list because that's is 38 and you can easily apply the rom knowledge purchase customer list is very simple m t r i so it's an ice 38 it's an intangible asset so you can easily apply the knowledge of rom there so you can easily do the purchase customer list right everyone is that clear purchase customer list is the application of ice 38 so you can easily apply the approach of the rom you understood yesterday let's let's look at the chairman statement and let's look at the matters you need to comment on the chairman statement i'm copying the chairman statement from here how many marks we have for chairman statement uh in the exam we have almost like five marks for the chairman statement. Okay, let's let's copy the chairman statement here. The next point under the line. Okay, I'm copying the chairman statement here. Can you all see the chairman statement on your screen now on the word file? Let's let's do the brainstorming and let's find the comment on the meta. Brainstorming and let's do comment on the matters. Why am I doing the chairman statement? Because it's a non-accounting matter. So you might struggle writing the matters uh, at home. But for the purchase customer list, you can easily write the matters, right? So let's let's go down to the chairman statement and let's see what sort of issues we have in the chairman statement. Okay. 
Meti Company's draft annual report includes a performance review written by the company's chairman from which the following extracts have been taken. So a chairman review as part of the annual report, that is something very fine. But let's see, is there something wrong in the chairman statement which has been published? The chairman opens the inverted comma. It is always a pleasure for me to be assisted with such a stable and a high performing company as METI. Look at this first statement. It is such a pleasure for me to be associated with such a stable and a high performing company as METI. That's the first statement, which is very con contradictory. It's a very contradictory statement because we've already seen the revenue going down and the profit going down of the train business of the train business, right? But even if you look at the uh, revenue, uh, the overall revenue of the company, the overall revenue of the company has fallen down from 94.3 million to 60.1 million. The profit of the company has fallen down from 22.1 million to 10.5 million. So is it like a very stable business? If you look at the opening paragraph, is, is the statement of the chairman contradictory? Is he trying to conceal something from the shareholders? It is always a pleasure for me to be associated with such a stable, high performing company. Look, look at the situation. I'm copying from the para one in the para one. Sorry, just give me one minute in the para one. We come to know that the revenue of the company has gone down and the profit of the company has gone down. Find the percentages for me quickly. Let, let me paste here. The revenue was 94, 94.3 million this year. It's 60.1 million. The profit was 10.5 million last year. It was 22.5 million. So how much is the down in the uh, revenue? The revenue is down by how much? Almost like 36% rounding off. Okay. Uh, and profit before tax is down by how much from the last year for the whole company? Almost 45%. So revenue down profit down and the chairman is saying it has always been a pleasure to be associated with such a stable and a high performing company. Is that a contradictory statement when you look at the performance above? Is that something contradictory to above results? So is, is there a material inconsistency uh, between the chairman statement and the actual results under the ISA 720? I hope you know the rule of the material inconsistency, right? Okay, let's go back above. During during my tenure as a chairman. Over the last five years, the company's business has grown each year and has produced an ever improving return for investor. The company business has grown each year and has produced uh, ever improving returns to investor. Is this that a contradictory statement again in it is. So just let me copy the statement. Uh, the company business has grown each year and has produced excellent results for investor. Has it grown this year? Has it grown this year? The company business has grown each year. Has it grown this year? So is, is that like a contradictory statement and has produced an improving returns to investor profit has gone down by 45%. Profit has gone down by 45% and the chairman is saying improving return for an investor. Right, the chairman is doing exactly the same thing you do in the exam paper that you read something and you write something. During my tenure as a chairman, the company's business has grown each year and has produced ever improving results for investor. This is exactly the way the student writes an answer in exam paper. Full stop. The audit working paper include notes of a discussion with the company's finance director in which he commends the chairman performance review and maintain that everyone understand that this is the chairman role to promote the company with a positive narrative. So see what is the finance director saying? He commends the chairman performance review and maintains that everyone understand that it is the chairman role to promote the companies with a positive narrative with a positive narrative. Or with a contradictory narrative is is that is the chairman uh, is is the finance director view right here the finance director statement right 
is he is he putting a positive narrative or is he putting a contradictory uh, narrative so is is the is the reply of a finance director interesting is the reply of a finance director interesting that the chairman role is to promote the company with a positive narrative whether whether he's telling a lie so you cannot promote a positive narrative by telling a lie to your shareholders the chairman is telling a lie so now let's comment on the matters now when you start to comment on the matters knowing the fact that there have been some contradictory statements uh is there any materiality accounting treatments no right we just go down commenting on the matters of the situation given to us so first of all we tell us the auditor has a duty to read and review the other information in the document containing the financial statements the auditor has a duty to read and review the other information in the document containing the financial statements to determine whether there are any material inconsistencies with the whether there are any material inconsistencies within other information or not so you started with not the accounting standard you started with an auditing standard because you were commenting on the chairman statement which is part of the isa 720 so you said the auditor has a duty to read and review the other information in the document containing the financial statement to determine whether there are any material inconsistency with it other information or not in this case in this case the review of the chairman statement the review of the chairman statement has identified several material inconsistencies where where the chairman statement is contradictory is contradictory to the financial results of meti right so you first started with the journal responsibility of the auditor by telling the uh, auditing standard you got one mark for that then you tell in this case the review of the chairman statement has identified several material inconsistency where the chairman statement is contradictory to the financial results of meti meti in this case the review of the chairman statement has identified several material inconsistencies where the chairman statement is contradictory to the financial results of meti meti full stop firstly the chairman mention that the uh, firstly the chairman mention uh, high performing company stable in a high performing company first of all the chairman mention that been mention firstly the chairman mention that meti is a high performing and a stable company which contradicts the actual financial results where revenue has fallen by a fill in the blank percentage revenue has fallen by a fill in the blank percentage and profit has gone down has gone down by a fill in the blank percentage full stop you get another one mark S- secondly the chairman mention the chairman mention that in last 5 years as in, in in last 5 years since he is serving he is serving as a chairman results have been sorry just let me copy that statement Um, uh, has produced ever improving returns grown each year and good results to shareholder since he is serving as a chairman results have been growing and better returns to shareholders have and better and improving results b- results have been growing 
and improving returns to shareholders which is contradictory as the results are falling as mentioned above follow stop so see you are telling that my duty as an auditor is to review the other information one mark in this case the review has identified several inconsistencies the second mark comment on the matter then you say firstly the chairman statement is wrong you get another one mark and you you put the references of the numbers quote the numbers then you put secondly the chairman statement is wrong and you get your second mark then you put the statement of the finance director that the stance of the finance director the stance of finance director is wrong as the role of the chairman is to portray is to portray the true and fair position true and fair position of the company not a positive stance not a positive stance by telling misleading information by telling misleading information to shareholder see you criticize one mark comment on the matter now see over here we commented on the matter by taking the information from the case study we didn't had the approach of materiality treatment account uh, treatment risk and impact right so are you finding this one mark every paragraph so we had a five mark situation we almost took five marks from the comment on matters even if you comment less you need to write evidence after so not i've given you maximum five marks on comment on the matters but you need to write evidence as well so you can even comment less than five above and then you put the heading evidence in working paper file and you write couple of evidences working paper file so if you can just write like three matters or four matters and you can write one evidence in the working paper file that's even fine but never write a zero evidence in working paper file so you can reduce the number of matters above and make space for evidence in working paper file is that clear to all of you so are you understanding the way to write comment on the matters you need to be within the case study you need to involve yourself within the case study and go down with it right now look at the second part of the question the second part of the question is very very interesting because in the second part of the question the examiner was asking us i think the second part of the question has gone down because i've copied the requirements here just give me one minute to fetch out the second part of the question okay the second part of the question was this let me copy this down we need to do that have everyone understood the issue 1 and issue 3 and will you be going with issue 2 back at home the purchase customer list is that even clear okay that's great okay now look at the second part with reference to exhibit 2 assuming no further adjustment will be made to the financial statement in relation to the operating license that means will the management be giving a disclosure of the going concern problems assuming no further adjustment will be made to the financial statement in relation to the operating license uh, or the chairman statement so will the management be rectifying the chairman statement will the management be rectifying the chairman statement assuming no adjustment is made to the chairman statement and to the railway operating license so does that mean management is reluctant to give a disclosure of the going concern problem and does that mean that the management is reluctant to rectify the chairman statement right everyone evaluate the appropriateness of the report evaluate the appropriateness of the report now i will ask you first what you think and then we'll see the report is right or wrong let's see whether you are clever enough to take the right perspective okay let me take you back to the second exhibit i'll open the second exhibit over here is the second exhibit on the case okay let's see what is the second exhibit here let me copy the second exhibit from here control c i'm taking the second exhibit on my uh, word file 
exhibit two and I'm copying the exhibit two here. Right, let's read the exhibit two. Okay. It is now the 22nd of July and all matters in relation to the purchase customer list have been satisfactorily resolved. So the matters relating to the purchase customer list have been satisfactorily resolved. Is that clear? So is the management in agreement with the auditor on the purchase customer list? Yes. But are they in agreement with the auditor on the uh, on the railway license and on the chairman statement? Everyone no, so it is the 22nd of July. We are about to sign the report and all the matters in relation to the purchase customer list have now been satisfactorily resolved following the submission following the submission of a customer pretension to the government complaining about the company's poor service level on the 19th of July 20 X 5 that is before the signing of the audit report the government released a statement announcing that it had withdrawn Petty company's preferred bidder status and was reopening the tender process for the national railway license. So see, uh, is that damaging the going concern status of the company now? Because the government has took a decision on the 19th of July. We are standing on the 22nd of July and we are about to sign the audit report and before the audit report on the 19th of July, the government has released a statement announcing that they are opening the bidding process and no more Meti is no more a preferred bidder. So is that escalating the going concern problem? Is that escalating the material uncertainty? No, the company will still not liquidate Hamza, but the material uncertainties will become more evident. Not 100% of the revenue is coming from train business, right? Not 100% of the revenue is coming from the train business. So we're not saying the company is closing down. But the material uncertainties are escalating. Okay, the the company's finance director has provided details of a short disclosure note he plans to include in the financial statement, which refers to the uncertainty in relation to the current status of the tender and possible going concern issues which might arise as a result of as a result. So, is the finance director uh, putting a short disclosure in the notes to the financial statement about the going concern problem? Look at this word here short. It's not a complete disclosure. It's a short disclosure. What does IAS one require? IAS one requires a complete disclosure, a adequate disclosure. Do you mean in a short do, do does it mean that in a short disclosure something will be omitted? You will not be telling everything to the shareholder. So are we giving a disclosure? Are we not giving a disclosure? Tell me we are giving a disclosure, right? But is it a short disclosure or is it an adequate disclosure? So will, will the auditor like will the auditor like the short disclosure? Will the auditor agree with a short disclosure? No. So the finance director has agreed to give a short disclosure of the material uncertainties full stop. The disclosure note concludes with the statement that the management of Medi company is very confident that the company will be successful in the tender process and that it will retain the national license for at least the next five years. So the company is still the company is still optimistic that uh, in the tender process, we will still win it. Has has the company been put out of the tender process or will they be participating in the tender process? They are they are no more. They're no more a preferred bidder, but are they still part of the tender process? So the company is taking a very subjective stance that they're still confident that they will win the license for next five years. Probably this seems like a very subjective judgment and probably believe like the fabricating the mindset of the shareholder. They're still telling the shareholder. Don't worry about we will still get the license. So it is a material uncertainty, right? Uh, on one side, they've lost the preferred bidder status. And on the second side, the company is still confident they will win the license. They might. We are not saying they're totally wrong. They might. But there is a material uncertainty, right? Which should be disclosed in the notes to the financial statement. But the problem over here is they're giving a short disclosure. That's one problem, right? Number two. 
the draft audit report includes an unmodified opinion the draft audit report includes an unmodified audit opinion and the key audit matter section and a key audit matter section which refers to the disclosure note described above and related uncertainties in the going concern status what have we done in the report tell me is the report right here honestly firstly there was a short disclosure there was a short disclosure given in the notes which means that the disclosure is inadequate so if the disclosure is inadequate there is a disagreement between the auditor and the management will the auditor agree to the short disclosure will the auditor agree to the inadequate disclosure so the short disclosure given in the note which means that the disclosure is inadequate and definitely that will mean that there is a disagreement between the auditor and the management so if there is a disagreement between the auditor and the management will that result in a modified report due to issuance of either due to issuance of either a qualified opinion because there is a disagreement or or an adverse opinion if 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 the if the note to the financial statement would have been adequate then you would have given a paragraph material uncertainty relating to going concern but over here the disclosure is not adequate how can you give a paragraph relating to murgc right so do you all agree that a short disclosure is a uh, is inadequate number 1 tell me bullet number 1 you're all clear on bullet number 1 all of you okay so when you believe this is inadequate bullet number 2 do you all agree with the disagreement between the auditor and the management okay then in the bullet number 3 should we issue a modified report if there is a disagreement do you all agree with that and either we will issue a qualified opinion or we will issue an adverse opinion depend upon how significant the matter is now tell me do you agree that this matter relates with going concern and this matter relates with material uncertainties relating to going concern which is uh, something very very important for the shareholder something very important for the shareholder if if they fail to get the license it can bring a big question mark on the future of this company so going concern it is a material uncertainty it is something very important for for meti future survival so in that case it is something per way sif and eventually the better opinion would be an adverse opinion if the management fails to give a complete disclosure so if the management is reluctant to give a complete disclosure this is a very pervasive matter you need to justify in the exam paper the basis of pervasive i hope i have justified the basis of pervasive something very important for meti's future survival and something very important for the shareholder this is not material this is material and pervasive right so what have we given in the draft audit report we have included an unmodified opinion in the draft audit report is that right is that wrong so you need to comment on the opinion you need to comment on the report is the report right is the report wrong and we have also included a key audit matter section which refers to the disclosure note do we refer to the disclosure of a going concern in cam understand understand if if the going if the going concern disclosure would had been complete would had been complete and adequate just imagine for a minute just imagine for a minute if the going concern disclosure would had been complete and adequate an auditor agree to it an auditor agree to it then what would have happened then the auditor would had added a para in the audit report after the basis of opinion para after the basis of opinion para known as 
M U R G C. So when you add an M U R G C paragraph, you add an M U R G C paragraph when the going concern disclosure would had been complete and adequate, and the auditor agreed to it. But in our case, it was a short disclosure. It was an incomplete disclosure, and you disagree to it. So you not just you you have included the going concern disclosure in a CAM. Can we include a going concern disclosure in CAM? CAM is for matters other than going concern, right? CAM is for matters other than going concern. So in a CAM, the key audit matter, the matter is other than going concern matter. If there is a going concern matter, will it come in CAM or will it come in MURGC? You cannot have an overlapping audit report that you put a matter in a going concern paragraph. You also put a matter in a CAM paragraph. You cannot make an overlapping report. So in a key audit matter paragraph, you can put whatever matter you want to put, whatever the definition of CAM is, but at least a going concern matter never gets to a CAM paragraph. Is that clear to all of you? So uh, key audit matter section in the audit report, is that right? Is that wrong? So that's that's the first wrong. That's the first wrong. And you have to justify why it's wrong when you tell the examiner. Key audit matter section, which refers to the disclosure note described above. So is this key audit matter paragraph right or wrong in the report? That's the second wrong. You have to justify the examiner. So we have included a key audit matter section in the audit report describing the related uncertainties. If the related uncertainties would have been right, you should not have included a CAM. You should have included in the M MURGC. Is that clear to all of you? You need to understand that CAM only comes for significant CAM only CAM only comes for significant areas like risky areas, areas involving areas involving estimates, areas involving estimates or subjectivity, or CAM comes in the financial statements for any significant adjusting or non adjusting event. So when you look at the definition of CAM, CAM comes in the audit report for significant areas like risky areas, areas involving estimates or subjectivity or adjusting or non adjusting area events. CAM does not come for going concern matter. So when you look at the word CAM key audit matter, the matter is as follow but does not include a going concern meta but does not include a going concern meta i hope you're clear on that so you need to pick up this word meta which meta in a cam significant areas like the following that is the definition of a meta for cam so do you agree that the report published by the supervisor is wrong number one for the modified audit opinion and you have to justify that by telling examiner what should had been the right opinion. Then the key audit matter section. You will tell examiner that the key audit matter section cannot come for going concern because if the going concern disclosure would had been complete, then you should have inserted a paragraph known as an MURGC paragraph. Is that clear to all of you about the rules and regulations? Okay, now just testing you, just testing you. The chairman statement there was a material uh, there was a material inconsistency in the chairman statement have we done anything in the audit report for that there was a material inconsistency in the chairman statement you you read that with me today so what is the impact of this on the audit report have we included any impact of this in the audit report above no so is, is that is is the is the report wrong the report published above the report published above is wrong because the report does not give any reference does not give any reference to other information paragraph highlighting highlighting the material inconsistency material inconsistency in the chairman statement so should you have included another information paragraph in the report highlighting the material inconsistency in the chairman report? 
have you done it have you done it so is the report published by the supervisor right or wrong there is no paragraph no other information paragraph in the chairman in the in the report okay what about the last issue the last issue was the published sorry last issue was the purchased customer list purchase customer list let's see who is a clever student in the last 10 minutes of this webinar today purchase customer list are you all ready to read the purchase customer list with me okay let me show you purchase customer list on the practice platform okay Can you all read this purchase customer list on your screen in front? I'm giving you five minutes. I hope this is big enough for you to read. Can you read this purchase customer list paragraph just and tell me, uh, tell me you are clear with what is happening in the purchase customer list? Just, just read it. I'm giving you three minutes. Okay, if you have all read it, uh, I'm asking you some questions. Give me the answer. Has the management done the right accounting treatment by recognizing the purchase customer list as an intangible asset? Okay, interesting. Some students said no. You're giving you're giving a triple A paper on the 6th of September and you have such bad accounting knowledge. The company has done perfectly right to record the purchase customer list as an intangible asset because they purchased it. It is a purchased customer list. So it should be treated as an intangible asset. That's perfectly right. Okay, is there some subjectivity along with the purchase customer list? That is you recognize you treated it as having an indefinite life. Is that something subjective treating it as an indefinite life? So is this an estimate of the management that it has an indefinite life rather than a definite life? Okay. The second subjectivity involved in the case is the value in use. They estimate, they estimate the value in use at 7.2 million. Now, if an intangible asset has an indefinite life, should you review the asset for impairment every year? And if the intangible asset has a finite life, you amortize it. But if the intangible asset has an indefinite life, you review it for impairment. Am I right? So if the life is finite, you amortize it. But if the life is indefinite, you review it for impairment every year. Have they reviewed it for impairment? Yes, they have. And they estimate the value in use to be 7.2 million. So estimate. So are there number of estimates involved in the scenario? First about the indefinite life. Second about the value in use. Is the value in use more than the carrying amount of the asset? The carrying amount of the asset is 6.9 million. So is there a need to recognize the impairment loss? Is there a need to recognize the impairment loss? No, because the value in use is higher than the carrying amount. So there is no need to recognize the impairment. So has the management done everything right? They've recognized it as an intangible asset. They, ha they are using it as an indefinite life model and they're carrying out the impairment. Does anything seems wrong here? So when you are writing the answer for matter, you will find the materiality of $6.9 million. You will write the accounting treatment. You will appreciate the accounting treatment. But the only risk is if the management estimate is wrong, 
the management might be understating the impairment loss. What if the estimate of 7.2 million is wrong? What if the uh, value in use is $6.5 million? Then should we record an impairment loss? So there is a risk, right? There is a risk because there is an estimate. But what is the examiner telling us in the exhibit number two? In the exhibit number two, the examiner is telling us, read this very carefully, everyone. In the exhibit number two, let me bring back to the word file. On the word file, what was the examiner telling us here? Re read this first line. Read the first line. It is now the 22nd of July and all matters in relation to the purchase customer list have now been satisfactorily resolved. So do we have any disagreement with management on the purchase customer list? Do we have any do we have any disagreement with management on the purchase customer list? No, has it been resolved? So do we agree with management value in use? Do we agree with management value in use? Do we agree with management indefinite life? So have we agreed to the management as assumption of indefinite life? Have we agreed to the management assumption of value in use? Because the examiner is saying uh, every matter relating to purchase customer list has now been resolved. So all matters relating to the purchase customer list has been resolved. Control C and you go down and you write things over here. Purchase customer list. All matters in relation to purchase customer list has now been resolved. Now my question to all of you is will this matter be reported in CAM? Let's see who is a good student. I just give you a definition of CAM. Right? Those of you who are saying yes, you are brilliant students. And those are who are saying no, you need to revise your knowledge of CAM. Purchase customer list. Look, look at the definition of CAM I just give you above here. Look at the definition of CAM I just wrote in the session today. And after that, I ask you a question. CAM is a matter which is a high risky area. CAM is a matter which is an area involving estimate and subjectivity. CAM is for significant adjusting and non-adjusting event. Purchase customer list. Is it not meeting the definition of an area involving estimates and subjectivity? Is it not meaning the definition of an area involved estimates and subjectivity everyone those who are giving the no answer those who are giving the no answer isn't isn't an area of estimate and subjectivity so now tell me now tell me go go by go by logics cam key audit meta If the purchase customer list purchase customer list is equal to an area involving estimate and an area involving subjectivity is equal to all matters resolved all matters resolved between auditor and management between the auditor and management between the auditor and management purchase customer list is equal to an area involving estimates and subjectivity is equal to all matter resolved between the auditor and the management is equal to it is a material area you can find the materiality you can find materiality it's a material area you can find materiality back at home is equal to it's a material area is equal to it is a listed company is equal to Meti is a listed company Meti is a listed company is equal to cam see this so you need to be critical uh, of knowing that which meta gets to cam examiner was very clearly giving you a hint Examiner was saying that the purchase customer list is an area involving estimate and subjectivity. Examiner was giving you a hint that all matters are resolved. There is no disagreement. It is a material area. And Meti is a listed company. 
Now, I normally tell my student, uh, those who take regular classes from me, that CAM is equal to LSP. CAM is equal to LSP. And my student knows it. Or those who have taken the webinars from me also know this. CAM comes for a listed company. So, METI is a listed company, first of all. Number two, CAM comes for something of a significant matter. Do you know the definition of a significant matter? Have I given you the definition of a significant matter above? Risky areas, adjusting and non-adjusting events, and areas involving estimates. Significant matter. LSP. CAM come for a positive matter. Was the examiner telling us it is a positive matter? All matters resolve. What if there would have been a disagreement between the management and the auditor on the purchase customer list? Would you have included a CAM then? Tell me, tell me this. Copy this, copy this formula from above and bring this formula down. Tell me who is a clever student. Purchase customer list is equal to an area involving estimate and subjectivity. All matter resolve. Let me write over here. There is a disagreement. There is a disagreement between the auditor and the management. See, I changed the statement. There is a disagreement between the auditor and the management is equal to it is a material area is equal to Matt uh, Matty is a listed company then what will come now because it's material so auditor will issue a qualified opinion am I right so you need to know the logics well that cam will only come when it is a significant matter but that matter has been resolved CAM will not come for negative matters. CAM will not come for matters where you have disagreement. If you have a disagreement, then either you will issue a qualified opinion or you will issue an adverse opinion. You cannot have a CAM for a disagreement, right? And you cannot even have a CAM for a going concern issue. Because for a going concern issue, we have a separate paragraph in the audit report. Is everyone clear with some understanding of CAM? Because again, this is a webinar. I cannot give you every knowledge about CAM. But are you getting some relevance to CAM here? So now tell me the report published by the report published by the supervisor. How many things are wrong in the report published by the supervisor? Let's let's make a checklist. Let's make a final summary of the report published by the supervisor. First of all, the report published by the supervisor includes a unmodified opinion. Number one, the second, uh, it includes CAM for going concern, CAM for going concern. Second, thirdly, it doesn't include, it doesn't include other information paragraph. It doesn't include other information para for chairman statement. And fourthly, it doesn't include it doesn't include a key audit matter for purchased customer list so see the wrong in the report first of all it include an unmodified opinion when a when a adverse opinion should be published have i given you the logic for adverse opinion when an when an adverse opinion should be published is everyone clear on that? Number one, please be quick. Include a CAM for going concern when going concern matter, when going concern matter is not included in CAM. Have I given you the logic for that, that the going concern matter doesn't come in CAM? It doesn't include the other information para for chairman statement when there is a material inconsistency. It doesn't include CAM for purchase customer list when the purchase list is a subjective area. When a purchase list is a subjective area and all matters are resolved. So everything, when, when you say something is wrong, you have to justify this. When you say something is right, you have to justify this. So if there is something wrong in the audit report, you have to justify why it is wrong. And if there is something right in the audit report, you have to justify why it is right. So I think the report published by the supervisor 
include something when it should not be included. And the report published by the supervisor doesn't include something when it should be included. So there are two doesn't and two includes. I hope you're all clear on that. Five marks. I hope you can write more than a five marks answer here. There are so much of the issues in the report published by the supervisor. So are you getting a clear analysis of this question number three of the June 21 exams? The five marks of reporting. And more importantly, I hope you're getting the knowledge about how to write comment on the matters which relates to several issues in the case study like uh, the railway operating license and going concern purchase customer list and chairman statement. Right. I hope you got some productive learning from the day three of the webinar. Uh, it was just focused on one question, but I hope this one question must have opened your mindset about how you read, how you understand, how you identify, how you put the answer. Right. I hope you must have learned something around MURGC, something around CAM, something around other information. You must have understood something about writing the methods, the marking schemes. Right. So I hope this session must have given you something. If you can just drop your feedback quickly as we move into the last few minutes of the webinar. Okay. Now one thing important. Tomorrow. Uh, when we meet up. We are meeting up tomorrow for something very, very important. And in the meantime, please keep dropping the feedback about the session today. Now tomorrow uh, is the fourth day of the webinar, right? And as per the schedule tomorrow, we need to do going concern tomorrow. Now we already had a glimpse of going concern today. But I want to discuss with you. A proper question on going concern tomorrow, which comes in the past paper. I think several times you must have seen in the past paper that the examiner publishes a full question on going concern just like the December 18 exams. If I look at the recent paper December 18 question number two, I guess was a very complete question on going concern. So if you have blur knowledge on going concern, if you have blur knowledge when to add an MURGC and when not to add an MURGC. The tomorrow session will give you a very good understanding about a question on going concern rules of going concern how going concern impacts the audit report, right? Then after that uh, in the last 90 minutes of the session tomorrow we will open up the data analytics even though I've covered data analytics on my YouTube channel and even in my previous webinars, but I want to discuss the data analytics tomorrow with you uh, from the view of the changes in the syllabus. I hope you remember the day one of the webinar. There is a change in the syllabus D2. And I told you in the day one session that I will be discussing the changes in the syllabus area D2 when I take on the data analytics article on day four. Right. So tomorrow is very important, right? Because you will get to understand the changes in the syllabus area D2, how they can be tested in your exam paper. What is the significance of the article on data analytics for September 21 even though it has been tested a couple of times now because it's now an old article not a new article and much more about the going concern question because I believe going concern question seems quite potential for the upcoming exam settings as well. So I just want to assure that you know the soundness of the question. So very very important agenda tomorrow day four. So I hope you have liked the all three days of the webinar so far. You must have learned something out of it and please also tell me are you watching the previous webinars which I am recommending and are you reading the articles? Are you trying to apply the techniques which I'm guiding you on a day by day basis? So are you listening? Are you watching the previous webinars? Are you exploring them and are they really benefiting you if you're doing a self study? There might be lots of students who are doing self study, right? So I hope these webinars are helping you and benefiting you. Okay, so I hope uh, to see you all live tomorrow in day four then of this webinar. So it's time to sign off from day three, the 5th of August uh, and the day three of the AAA practice to pass for September 21 exams being organized by ACC Pakistan. I am your tutor Kashif Kamran signing off from day three. 
I wish you all a very best of luck for your upcoming exams and I hope you reinforce the concept given to you by your tutor in this webinar. Thank you so very much for coming in the live session and participating enthusiastically. I'll see you tomorrow with the day four. Till then, take good care of yourself. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz.